Hi everyone! Today I'll be walking you through the simulation of my monocopter craft, designed to hover and stabilize itself while responding to external forces. I've built this entire system in Simulink and MATLAB with a focus on understanding key system dynamics that will ultimately guide the real world flight. Let's begin with the most important section of the simulation, the Euler rotation function and the 6 degree of freedom block. This part forms the heart of the system, computing the vehicle's orientation and position over time. The 6 DOF block integrates the external forces like thrust and gravity to simulate the motion of the craft in three-dimensional space. These outputs are fed back into the Euler rotation block, which converts the results from the 6 DOF calculations into the craft's current angles for roll, pitch, and yaw. Essentially, this is what gives the system the correct orientation data needed to maintain control and balance. It's crucial for ensuring that all the downstream PID controllers have the right information to keep the craft stabilized. Next, we have the rotor block, which handles the forces and torques generated by the spinning motor. This block includes important parameters like the thrust and torque coefficients, which reflect the actual motor I'm using in real life. The rotor outputs the critical forces in the x, y, and z directions, as well as the torque around the z axis. These values are fundamental to controlling the craft's lift and responding to disturbances. While the rotor block doesn't include some advanced features, like flap effects, which would add complexity to the simulation, it does give me enough reliable force and torque values to be useful. One of the most important aspects of this simulation is how I've handled gyroscopic precession. As the rotor spins, it generates forces in the perpendicular axes due to precession, and these must be accounted for to prevent the craft from tipping over unintentionally. I've designed a block specifically for this, which calculates the gyroscopic torques and applies corrections to the control system. This is a key area of the simulation because, even though the real-world PID gains can be fine-tuned during testing, precision effects were difficult for me to visualize and I wanted to gain a better intuition about countering these forces. Next, let's dive into the PID controllers. The primary PID controller I use manages altitude by controlling the rotor speed based on the error between the current altitude and the desired altitude goal. This simulation also includes controllers that stabilize the craft's orientation around the X and Y axis, keeping it level. These controllers aim to maintain a zero degree pitch and roll angle by adjusting the tilt commands to the fins, correcting any drift or tilt in the craft. In addition to stabilizing orientation, I've also implemented a second set of PID controllers to handle the craft's position along the X and Y axes. These position controllers take in the current position and, when the craft drifts from the goal, output the necessary pitch and roll angles to bring it back to its original position. Essentially, these controllers adjust the craft's angle, commanding a tilt to correct the lateral drift while keeping the overall goal in mind. It's this combination of altitude and position that allows the craft to hover stably over a fixed point even when external forces like wind or disturbance try to knock it off course. You'll also notice that I've placed delay blocks after the PID subsystem, which simulate lag from the servos that control the fins. Initially, I had planned to model more complex servo dynamics, but I ran into some issues where the simulation wouldn't compile. For now, these delay blocks provide a simpler way to approximate the servo response time without adding too much complexity. While this isn't the most realistic approach, it's hopefully enough to give me a good idea of how the system will perform in real-world conditions. 
The last element to consider is the ground interaction model, which accounts for when the craft touches the ground and limits the forces in the Z direction to simulate a spring dampening effect. This prevents the craft from falling to the ground. Some parameter tuning was required to ensure that the craft did not bounce or jitter when it contacted this model. So, those are the important parts of my simulation. This project was a challenge, but after lots of simulated PID tuning, I believe I have a system that's realistic enough to be useful, at least for me. I'm currently writing the flight software and will likely return to the simulation to make changes and fine tune it more. If this helped you at all, or you want to see future updates, a like and subscribe go a long way. Thanks so much for watching.